two, three, four. Welcome back to Inside Gaming. As chaos consumes the outside world and voluntary isolations are more frequently becoming mandatory quarantines, we thought it'd be a good idea to put together a little quarantine care package for those of us homebound or in self-isolation. That's right, now that we're all confined to a solitary living space, it's finally time to get to work and dig into that backlog of shame. Or you could check out all these cool new games that came out last year that you didn't play. Or, you know, the ones coming out this year. Well, regardless of which games you decide to spend your time with, we're here today to help you put together a great list of games that will help you wait out your quarantine situation without so much as a pee break. Okay, that's not true, even a little bit, but we are about to drop a ton of games on you. Uh, so let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I hope you're ready for some games. <laughs> Fun fact, there is actually an upside to having a backlog. Yeah, there are plenty of amazing games that you probably already own, but just didn't get around to playing yet. Yep, and uh, to make you feel less guilty about your own little pile of shame, we went through the trouble of checking around the office to find out everyone's most shameful backlog games and cardinal gaming sins. Oh, uh, wait, what? No, uh... Oh my god, Evan, you you haven't played anything. Lawrence Sontag? <laughs> yeah, you? I'm probably the worst uh, gamer, if it, as it were. What the hell's the matter with you? You're worse than me. You're fired. Bad gamer, Evan Campbell. Come on, those games are probably just okay anyway, right? Uh, no, they're all... <laughs> no, that's my favorite defense, when you haven't seen something popular and you're just like, probably sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's very sophomore year of high school. <laughs> I know you can't see my face right now, but my smile <laughs> is... <laughs> Uh, level of uh, eating grin that I think is appropriate. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I'll turn in my gamer gun and badge right now. All right, okay, okay. Being enemies of the game state and public defamation aside, we did also put together a list of recommendations from each of us here at Inside Gaming. Not that you can really trust us anymore, well, not Evan. But hey, you know, in time of great need, you must turn to the our gaming paragons. Yeah, so. Patrick. <laughs> well, <wait. laughs> Okay, so my uh, recommendation when you're stuck in and doing nothing is Astroneer. It is a game that has been out for a while. It was in early access for a long time, hit 1.0 last year. It's delightful. It's like an approachable no man's sky. It's like a fresh Minecraft. You don't have to worry about blazes or uh, creepers or whatever. It's new stuff. You just suck ground and then you put it down. You can make a car. It's the sound design to the art design, the, the controls. It is such a delight. It's got so much heart and I just really like it. And you can just zone. So it's a great way to pass four hours and never think once about going outside. Yeah, I watched Patrick chop you in a hole the other day on stream. I got and that very was... upset. That is what that <laughs> game is good for. It's just endlessly with people who are trying to actually play the game. Cyberbullying? Cyberbullying. I, I got cyberbullied off for cyberbullying yesterday. <laughs> yes, yeah, so if you're stuck at home, I would recommend Path of Exile. Mm. Yeah, it's like kind of a Diablo 2 type of game. Insanely intimidating, complex character customization. It's ridiculous, but free to play and it's really, really, really good. Their microtransactions are wildly overpriced, so I imagine that's how they pay for everything. So don't buy skins and stuff, but the game itself, which is free to play, is really, really good. Go play that, otherwise, you know, just go back, play a bunch of, play some old Remedy games. Doesn't Path of Exile have an enormous skill tree? Yeah, that's what I, was, that's what I meant. Uh, the skill tree is like the most absurd thing I've ever seen in my life. It's gigantic. It's bigger than like most MMOs, but yeah, it's a very good game. So yeah, I had a a hard time just picking one, but uh, the first pick I would say uh, people should check out if they haven't seen it already is the the Banner Saga, which is a really kind of um, a weighty trilogy. Uh, it's got a cool Western art style. And yeah, it's like cell hand animation. I played a yeah. little bit of it. It looks, the way they move is awesome. Yeah, the way the characters move and just the art looks is, is really incredible and it kind of unfolds in, in three parts. There's the narrative end where you have these like Mass Effect style character interactions with choices that you make that actually like impact events in the game. It, you know, can determine whether characters live or die or, you know, parts of your caravan uh, live or die. And uh, that's the other thing. There's there's like caravan management. Sometimes you're like, oh, should we go look for food or set up camp for the night? And you could lose like 10 or 20 people if you choose the wrong thing. You know, for a sim management game, it's baked inside like a really good narrative driven game. It's great. And finally, there's the combat, which is just pretty fun and 
basic strategy gaming, I guess, like grid-based strategy gaming. Uh, and there's three of these games, so there's plenty of time for people to kind of sit down and, and chew through these, and they have a really great atmosphere, so it's fun to do. My other recommendation is just a quick shout-out to Below. It's like a Souls-like, but it's not super difficult like a Souls game would be, and the combat like isn't quite there. But in terms of exploration and going into these dungeons and, and learning a place, it's, it's really, really cool. Oh, I would also like to recommend Almanita Design, I think the studio is. They make really fucking awesome point-and-clicks with a really cool art style. Go buy oh, yeah, all of them. for sure. They're super cheap. Machinarium, that's a good one to start with. Oh yeah, I remember uh, you talking about Awesome games. I'm gonna need to go play Animal Crossing New Leaf on my 3DS. <laughs> Up next, we got Caden recommending Golden Sun. The whole series. She said it's easily one of the most underrated games of the Game Boy Advance era and possibly one of the most overlooked JRPGs of all time. You take those classic SNES era Final Fantasy and give them a little uh, much needed quality of life upgrade. We've got the Golden Sun series, so. Huge summons, unique ways to build characters, an extremely grand yet intimately told story, the Golden Sun series will let you explore a fantastical world where you're stuck inside your homes. It's a shame that the only way to play these besides going and grabbing the old GBA is on the Wii U eShop. But hey, beggars can't be choosers in these trying times. That is the only way yeah, to play right. them. Blink. Probably never been a better time to try and figure out emulation, or, if that's something no. you're interested in. Or just some Assuming you already way. own the game. Of, of course, course, of course. Of course you have to already own the game. So Alana wanted to spotlight the witness, giving a testimony about how it got her through a tough time. And she said, quote, I had pneumonia for the first time about five years ago, and I hugely credit The Witness for keeping my mind sane during that period of time. It's hard and sometimes requires creative solutions like using real world mirrors and pieces of paper to solve puzzles. At the same time, it manages to be really pretty, colorful, and relaxing in terms of environment, aesthetic, and even traversal. Mm hmm. Up next is Autumn. You know her, you love her. Autumn Farrell, ladies and gentlemen. Who the f is that? So I submitted The Sims 4, uh, yeah. and I did say to Evan that the base Sims 4 game is kind of lame, to be honest, because they took out a bunch of <laughs> Thanks, EA. Uh, but Sims 4 with the Pets expansion, the Seasons expansion, and the City Life expansions, it's actually really f fun. And I know that this is like not a niche game by any means, but it is definitely the best game to play if you're like depressed or, you know, having a hard time, which we're all doing right now. Um, yeah, you can fire up The Sims and you can live your dream life there instead. You can get unlimited money, there's no coronavirus, and you can become a f***ing astronaut like you always wanted instead of being a dumb YouTuber, so <laughs> pretty good. That's awesome. Uh, originally, Amir picked Dreams, and he did a really cool video about it a while ago, so you should watch that if you haven't. Uh, but then Amir walked it back and he picked Super Mario Maker 2 instead, saying, as a huge fan of Mario games, I can say that even in the main entries, there's a ton of replayability to them. Super Mario Maker 2 is no different because it's based on user-generated levels. This is great because you never run out levels to play. Honestly, this is the most genius thing Nintendo could have thunk up because I'll never get bored. Until I get bored and put it away for a month. But when I do go back, I never get bored. <laughs> Please add a Super Mario 64 game style so I can die happy. <laughs> I guess that was just kind of a request at the end there, not as much a recommendation. Uh, so Brian picked Hearthstone. When I asked him for a box quote, he said, it's like Magic the Gathering, except easier. So, <laughs> confirmed Brian Casual. <laughs> Zach is also digging a little deeper here with the Final Fantasy X recommendation. He said, nostalgia is definitely a huge part of it. I was nine when it came out, and it was really the first Final Fantasy game that crossed my path at a time when I was just old enough to enjoy it. The pacing is also a huge part of the comfort factor to me. It took Final Fantasy back to strictly turn-based combat, which meant you have all the time in the world to plan out a battle move by move. Aside from that, it's just a wonderful world to get lost in when you have these giant blocks of time. Look, I am sure we will all get to these old, boring games eventually, but we haven't even gotten to the cool games that came out this year that we should tell people about. So, of course, we got Neo 2, we got Animal Crossing New Horizons, and Doom Eternal, they're coming out. They're already out, actually. So that should put a hefty dent in your quarantine time, but if you're really bad at rationing your games and you burn through Neo or Doom too quickly, Resident Evil 3 Remake, Half-Life Alex, and Final Fantasy 7 Remake are just a couple of weeks away. However, you probably already knew about those, so if you're looking for something a little more off the beaten track, Mr. Frost, then might we suggest checking out Death Crown. Ooh, Death Crown, what the f is going on? What is that? Is that about? Where the hell's he going? Yeah, according to the description, it's a minimalist real-time strategy game in a one-bit style where you will be play death herself, commanding her legions of death and punishing humanity's kingdoms for its overconfidence. But if you like RTS games or tower defense, you should definitely check it out. It's one of those really simple kind of strategy games, but because it's simple, it lets you really quickly dive into the meat of the game and like the heart of the, the strategy and complex ways that you might play it. So yeah, check out Death Crown. Speaking of death, this next game is in no short supply. Blood Roots has been drawing a lot of comparisons to games like Hotline Miami and Katana Zero. 
but its world is realized in 3D instead of 2D. That said, you can tell by the look and some of the mechanics here that it has its own take on the genre. It might be worth it for a couple of hours if you're tired of being cooped up inside and just need to get some aggression out. <laughs> This next game is technically cheating because it's in early access, but it is coming out this year and you can play it right now. And yeah, if you know the pedigree of Supergiant Games, then you know this is a game to keep your eye on. The only problem is a lot of us have been waiting for the game to actually be finished before jumping in, but given the circumstances, maybe it's better just to play it now and then be surprised when those finishing touches finally come out on the full release. Of course, we'd be remiss not to mention that active quarantines have many people rushing back to those oh so familiar stomping grounds like World of Warcraft and Minecraft. And actually that's pretty great. Both games have seen a number of updates and quality of life improvements, especially the console versions of Minecraft, with more standardized versioning across platforms and cross-play features. There's a reason those games became so popular in the first place, and they provide a social element as well. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's even time to jump back into Destiny or The Division 2, or uh, we could get good at fighting games. Maybe mess around and really learn what those mobile and auto chess games are all about. There's so much time now. Yeah, let's not get carried away. I'm not gonna do any of that. Okay, yeah, on. I'm only going to play Sudoku. <laughs> Lastly, it might be worth mentioning there's a few of you out there who make the rest of us look bad. You know, you can't sit still for all that long. You need fresh air and exercise, but damn it, it's mm -hmm. kind of what makes you great and good looking. So these next couple games are for you. Yeah, the king of exercise games right now is obviously Ring Fit Adventure. People love working out with this game, so if you already got one or come into possession of a copy, you might come out the other side of this quarantine looking fit as hell. Uh, mm. It's very hard to get like, a hold of one from what I've heard yeah. recently. <laughs> Uh, uh, they're, they're scarce out there and very expensive uh, yeah. and eBay or whatever. Now, of course, you don't actually have to play an exercise game to exercise. In fact, for a lot of us, it's probably better when our brain is being tricked and we think we are doing something else. Yeah, and I hate to admit it, but just dance might be the best way to keep you sane and healthy while trying to stay indoors for prolonged periods of time. Or at the very least, it will help prevent you from obtaining all the IRL achievements of sedentary living. Another game worth mentioning here, which probably won't get your blood flowing as much, but could absolutely get you and your family up and moving is Happy Action theater now you are just going to have to bust out your old 360 and connect <laughs> but it's probably worth it yeah. ah yes my connect yeah. i know where <laughs> that is yeah it's i mean i just put this in here because i really like that floor is lava mode it makes me laugh every time where it's basically you know the connect to the camera facing your living room and it literally fills it up with lava and hey phil spencer you guys just bought double fine so uh, priority one right here, put this game to Xbox One so people sure. don't have to dig it out in their closet. Lastly, an honorable mention to Beat Saber, which will also get you all riled up in a sweat. But uh, you know, it's a VR exclusive, so if you have a VR headset, you already know what's up. If you don't, uh, you can't play this game. Go f yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Plenty of games to check out as the world melts around us. And if you get tired of playing games yourself, you can always come and hang out with us while we play games. Yeah. We'll be streaming during the week, so look out for us live on YouTube. We're also on episode four of the all new IG podcast, Send News and it's pretty good. You might not have a commute anymore, but it's still not a terrible way to start off a Friday. Yeah, who wrote this? Uh -uh. <laughs> and a more serious note, please stay safe and be extra considerate of others during this hectic time. Yeah, in the meantime, go, go buy a, get a Game Boy Advance, a 360 with a Kinect, and a Valve Index. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most expensive video we've ever made. It's an accessible gaming video. Hey, let's talk about GameStop, uh, AKA the coronavirus' number one BFF. Aw, look at how cute they are. Power to the virus. Aw, oh no. Oh yikes, <laughs> oh no. GameStop made the news recently after employees told us and a bunch of other media outlets that the retail chain is staying open as usual during the coronavirus. Cool! Cool. cool. Awesome! That's so rad!